because we get all of our good information from TikTok. Yeah, that's where the good stuff is. So um, we're going to eat, drink, and be merry. I mean, drink as in, you know, Diet Mountain Dew here. And um, I've got 10 ounces of meat on my plate. <clears throat> there you go. What, what better afternoon than eating meat yeah. and talking conspiracy facts? Doesn't get better than this. So was that TikTok? Mm, right after I take a bite. Yeah. So we're going to be chomping on some food. It's going to be great. Come. Well, and you saw, so the one, so the whole conspiracy thing, like I never really believed that crap until we worked at the fire department, <laughs> until I met Tyler Martin. <laughs> um, and not that I, not that I necessarily, like, I always believed that there was corrupt government and corrupt people within the government or whatever. Not necessarily that all governments are corrupt, but they tend to kind of grow that way, right? Yeah. And, uh, but then you hear like, you know, Alex Jones or some of these guys like, the Twin Towers was done by the government or whatever, you know? And it's like, yeah, right. Well, with just a little bit of information that's out there, like there's that documentary on the Twin Towers. Yeah. Or you find these interviews. I sent you one the other day of yeah, so a fire, fire marshal, marshal yeah. a, a New York City fire marshal that's being interviewed. And he's like, I am actually like, a, what did he say? Like a Subge and then, subject matter expert, right? Yeah. And I go to court. Like part of my job is to go to court and talk about what I find in these things, you know, and this guy was an older guy. He'd probably been He's in been it for, for years. 30 years or yeah. whatever. I don't know exactly. He doesn't ever say, but, um, and he's telling this reporter that there was molten steel, you know, that he's like, I was digging around on the pile and saw this molten steel. Like that does not, st steel does not melt from just a fire like yeah. that. Or even jet yeah. fuel. Jet fuel doesn't melt steel. And he said, too, he's like, there's there's no other buildings in history that have fallen because of a fire. But like, they're specifically seven, built because of that. Building 7, straight down. Well, all of them. Yeah. I mean, the other two, you could, you could say they were hit by airplanes. So they had the weight of an airplane, extra people, you know, all that. I agree. It's still not enough. For yeah. a perfect controlled demolition straight down. Mm -hmm. Now, I've had this discussion with people, and it usually gets to the point, and I don't blame people because, like, it's it's tough. It's a lot to swallow. It is a lot to swallow. I've had people say, I won't believe that our government would do that. Uh, okay, cool. Then the conversation's mm -hmm. over, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is three perfect controlled demolitions straight yeah. down. You can't even control demolition that well for three of them to happen. And like mm -hmm. building seven wasn't hit by anything. Well, and then, and then mm -hmm. all of that, all of that steel is immediately loaded on ships and sent to China and melted down. Yeah. Without, yeah. without doing any investigation. Yeah. See, exactly. <laughs> I love this stuff. Uh -huh. I have no idea. I'm like, just. <laughs> that's, my, that's fact. The beginning like, so of my journey. Conspiracy or not. Like that's fact. Like that happened. What's that documentary that we watched about architects and engineers? Yeah. yeah. Is that what it's called? Well, there's a group called architects and engineers that have, I have meat in my mouth. Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, three or 4,000 architects and engineers that are on board. Well, it's, this group is more than three or it four, might, right? Yeah, it's it hundreds. Yeah. It's like a whole association of, of people that yeah. there was a few guys that started out looking at this and going, Hey, some of this doesn't make sense. And they, they were legitimately engineers, yeah. architects. Yeah. And then they've gone around and presented this information and as they've presented this, more and more people, more and more engineers and architects yeah. have looked They're into like, it oh, yeah. and gone, okay, yeah, like we're demanding that there needs to be an investigation because there has never been one. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. It, that's out there on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, it's totally real. Um, who coined the term conspiracy theorist? The CIA. The CIA. Mm-hmm. They did. It was in a CIA document 
where they co- they coined the term conspiracy theorist. How do you guys know? Like, where do you go to get? We you? know everything. You know everything. <laughs> I want to know how you know everything. Where do you like? You know the best place to talk, I guess. the best place to find stuff huh. is any book that's pre eighteen ninety. Really? Any book that and now obviously Twin Towers and pre eighteen ninety is not even CIA yeah. is not you know <clears throat> exactly. going to be in their C- or pre eighteen ninety. Truth is found pre. 1890. It was kind of the 1850s and and further. They started to suppress information and hold things from the public. You had Abraham Lincoln stand up. This is in the Library of Congress. You can find it in the archives on the White House's website. Abraham Lincoln's talking at Niagara Falls, and he goes, "We are here among." I'm going to butcher this, but pretty much, we're. We are where the giants used to live. The giants that are found in the mounds. And he's giving this mm. big, long speech about how a, a race of giants used to live in the, in the United States, and they were buried in, in the mounds. And like, are, are you talking the mounds that were pre-pyramids? The mounds mm. that were built by the same people that eventually built the pyramids? Like, stuff was known, mm-hmm. and it was systematically taken out. Well, it, it makes you wonder, too, when he said those kind of things. I mean, they didn't have all the, like, LIDAR and all the things that we yeah. have now. There is yeah. actually mounds and pyramids back there in New yeah, York. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know, there are like, pyramids in the United States. So I always follow the money. So where is the money for covering up something like giants living before us? What's the financial benefit? I don't know. Not, I actually don't know. Well... I'm probably off here, but if you can suppress that we are children of God, yeah, and you can teach that we are on a spinning ball of nothing in the middle of an infinite universe, and that we evolved from some big bang that just happened. So there's no meaning. Yeah. But when, we're, humans are meaningless yeah. essentially yeah. we're like, just here by chance I, I actually think that there's a big benefit there because it then gives you a society full of non-thinking drones that will just go and work for the corporations of the Rothschilds yeah and, and, this, and maybe it wasn't necessarily they meant to suppress that there was giants or pyramids or whatever but it was like that stuff doesn't even matter and it was more uh you know, uh, an effort to focus on principles and think, set the system up in a way that people are workers, right? Wasn't yeah. it? Wasn't it Rockefeller that said that or something? Like, I don't yeah. need a nation of thinkers; I need a nation of workers, essentially, something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. And so maybe it's not necessarily trying to suppress information out, but it's like, well, in order to get a nation of workers or slaves. It's not that we need to get that out of there, but we just need to focus on this stuff over here, yeah. you know, or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if there's a huge financial benefit except for the fact that you have the Rockefellers that created the public school system. Mm-hmm. And they created it so that we would have generations of workers and not thinkers. Mm-hmm. I don't even believe that university teaches people to think. Like no. it's, oh, We're not, especially taught, now. not taught to think. No way. Yeah, no way. Just do what you're told. Yeah. Go, you know, blend in with society. Yeah, I mean, no. Our school system sucks. Yeah. Well, and there's even top... You look at Jordan Peterson, how outspoken he is on how bad the school system is anymore, you know? Here's a a lifelong career educator out here talking about how how bad it is, you know? I mean, and how many people are trying to suppress him from, from what he's saying. For sure. The Bible talks about giants, too, by the way. Mm-hmm. They were the Nephilim. The Nephilim were a race of giants, and God took them out in the flood. Hmm. It makes you wonder, like, how giant of a giant. Like, cause, oh, I know. Because there's, there's civilizations even here on the earth now that are, like, okay, five feet tall or whatever. So were those, like, seven-foot people? like, Or were they, like, actual <laughs> legit? We talk about what I mean? giants. What about the race of midgets? Uh, tiny, tiny, like two feet tall, right? <laughs> the fairies. So, depending on how small people are, anybody could be a giant. That's true. Anyway. Oh, see, now, 
Now we're talking relativity. But wasn't wasn't there actually um, there's actually been some giant like skeletons of giants and stuff found, right? There's but, the, but they're in the Smithsonian, and the yeah. Smithsonian kind of yeah, they're like the, the Vatican. They lock yeah. them away and don't. Yep, which and, is weird to think about. Like, oh yeah, what would, like when, John was saying, what's the benefit of that? You know, like yeah, it's fascinating. I feel like people would want to know yeah. all they can about that. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Well, you can see, and I and I don't really know why. I, maybe it's pride, but you find something new in archaeology, and they're like they try to play it off. You know, so there are, there's new data that comes out that says, look, the Sphinx, for example, has weathering patterns on it that are not consistent with it only being 6,000 years old. It's much, much older. Hmm. Well, then they just play it off as, well, it probably has weather patterns because it was a, not as hard of a stone. And you're like, no, H- how about we actually like, don't play off Mm-hmm. what we think we know let's challenge everything look at all possibilities look at all possibilities like mm-hmm. that's why i i want people to research flat earth you don't have to believe that the earth is flat but go research it challenge your own beliefs look at two sides yeah and that's the problem is nobody wants to like look at a, a social you know what and and i'm guilty of this too you know but like take any social problem or view or anything like we are so divided right now and it's just because of that like i'm not willing to look at and i am on some things Mm -hmm. um but i'm not willing to look at somebody else's point of view and really see where they're coming from and i feel like there is a specific side that does that less than another side yeah but that could there again just be my bias as well yeah but it's it's like even to the point of denying actual science and stuff like yeah. there's people that <clears throat> will like die on a principle that is 100 percent false they're dying on a <laughs> on a fake hill <laughs> yeah exactly well, it's, it's like, crazy have you seen the joe rogan po- podcast with uh bernie sanders have you seen that one? Uh, Bernie Sanders. I, I did listen to that back it's, in yeah, it's it was old, a long time ago. But I went back and listened to it just because growing up, you know, Bernie Sanders is this nut job that is trying to give everything away. And so mm-hmm. I went and actually listened to his concepts and stuff. And it's he's got some good points. Like the, the things that he's trying to do and promote and help people, I genuinely think that he is trying to help people. And growing up, I just thought, oh, he's from the left wing. He's, you know, a nut job that's going to ruin America. But I think his concepts are really thought out and aren't just some wacky idea. Yeah, that... well, it is interesting to to take someone like Bernie Sanders, for example. And when he's running for president, you're like, oh, no, we can't have this kook in. And then we get an actual kook in. <laughs> and you go, okay, I, I, would, I would take Bernie right now over what yeah. we have. <clears throat> now, the, the, the principles I just, I just don't believe in. Anytime this... Anytime socialism has become an experiment, it has turned to communism, and communism has right. never worked. Right. I think his, his concepts are good. It makes sense um, until you go to uh, how you'd actually implement it, because it's all about, you know, let's get these communities together and we'll build these, uh, you know, groups of people that'll help distribute wealth and we'll do it this way. But you can't practically do that, because then once you get to that stage of distributing it, it's going to get corrupted and it's never going to get to the people that actually need the help. A so. two-tiered society, which this is what's interesting. It's still happening. Regardless of whether mm-hmm. Bernie Sanders is in or not, we're still turning into the two-tiered society that they've always wanted. Mm-hmm. So, and, and you have a guy that says, we're going to distribute the wealth that's done nothing in his life and is very wealthy. Yes. It, so yeah. it's like, well, you could distribute your wealth on your own anyway. Yes. It's like, you know, like. And it has been proven time and time again that the best wealth distribution is coming from capitalists mm-hmm. that are trying to help. Mm-hmm. Like, that is the number one. Or charities or even, you know, religion. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. The, the LDS church is very good at redistributing tithing money out to actually help. Mm-hmm. You know, millions or billions of dollars that actually go to helping. Which, what are we doing? Sending billions to Ukraine for what? Like, I'm not pro-Russia or pro-Ukraine or anything. I don't know enough about it to know. 
But all I know is <clears throat> we continue to send money, and Zelensky gets named person of the year. <laughs> and, and celebrities keep going over there. Why? Like, just ask. Mm-hmm. Why? Mm-hmm. Why? Well, back to if we could actually follow the money. Yes. It's getting scrubbed, and then it's finding its way back over here. And just, you know, yeah, what was the Pentagon thing? Just barely, like, $2.2 2 that's unaccounted for? Mm-hmm. It happened again? Again, and it was after, oh, or maybe, I'm, I'm mixing up number amounts, but on September 10th, 2001, Donald Rumsfeld said that the Pentagon was missing a whole bunch of money, and yeah. then September 11th happened, no mm-hmm. one ever thought about it again. And did, wasn't it supposedly that the plane, the plane or whatever it was, hit, it hit the right, at the, yeah. right at the office where that stuff was tracked? Yeah. And the records for that was, yeah. supposedly? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think they're supposedly. Crazy. I'm pretty sure it hit it. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, right. Something hit it. <laughs> well, I mean... It's, there's no video evidence and like, of a plane hitting it, though, right? Uh, Could potentially... There's a streak, but there's, there's a, streak. a lot of speculation on what that streak is. Could be a missile. But, uh, well, and it's wild, too, to think about that. Like, okay, so our own government institutions can't account for these huge amounts of money... Yet we need more IRS agents oh, to geez. come out. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's like it's it's crazy. It's, all it's it crazy. You have six hundred bucks in your Benmo account, and you're going to be audited. Hmm. I don't know if audit is the right word, but mm-hmm. six hundred. It's going to have to be accounted for. But I thought those IRS agents were were for the billionaires. Right. Okay. Yeah. Just, it's uh, you know back to like the whole conspiracy thing and believing or not believing or. You know, I think a lot of people look at like the 9-11 thing or whatever and they go, well, how could that, how could something so big be covered up like that? Like all it takes is one person or whatever, you know, to, to do that. But you look back through history, there's been secret combinations forever. Yeah. And even to me, one of the biggest ones is the Federal Reserve. Oh. Like you, you get, you, how that whole thing transpired. Yeah. And the reason behind it, you know, there's this group of people that just so happen to be financial leaders and government leaders, and they secretly, with the windows, you know, curtains drawn on these train cars, make their way down to Georgia. They're specifically told, yeah, they're specifically told, you can't tell, you know, we're not talking about anybody with their first name, all this stuff. Like, if that can happen, yeah. which it did, it, it happened, did. and it still is ongoing. Yeah. Like, that's it, it is the control of the world mo- money supply. So, so to finish, like, like, what's any bigger than that? To finish that story out, they drafted what would be the Federal Reserve System. So, there were bankers. They were the richest people in the world. There were political leaders, and they drafted how they would take all the banks and they would put them all together into a banking cartel called the Federal Reserve, which is not federal, and it has no reserve. It literally just prints our money. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't, it's not, there's not even government oversight. I think a lot of people, you know, and they're always very smart when they do these things. Let's call it the Federal Reserve. So people think that it's part of the government, and it's actually there to protect them. It's not part of the government. Yeah. The government doesn't even have any oversight on it. It just yeah. it just it it mandates whatever it wants when it comes to monetary policy. Yeah. We're gonna mm. target two percent inflation because that's what we need to do. Like, well, we just had thirty percent inflation. So where's that two percent targeting? And when you can just print your own money supply, it's, well it's an issue. And I mean think about how ingenious and how evil of a system that is. So so we're going to go off the gold standard and we're going to make it so that the Federal Reserve controls the amount of money in the, the economy. Well, it's a system that can never end. Like they just sit, set themselves up mm-hmm. to be infinite. Like, so when $1 is created... There's automatically an amount of interest that is paid to the Federal Reserve. Hmm. So they print a dollar. I think it's like 6%. Isn't that what it is? I don't know. 
That's what I've heard. Like, so a good resource for this is uh, Mike Maloney's. Oh yeah. Um, what's that one called? Yeah, the series on money. Yeah, what is that called? The um, I'll look it up. But anyway, so he goes in like how um, all of this works, and essentially there's interest associated with every dollar that is printed. And so you can never get back to zero. Once that system starts, you can, even if they paid back all of the money, well, there's still interest owing. And so they would have to have the Federal Reserve print more money to pay back the interest. Hmm. So it never ends. Like, it can never go to zero. So it's not that, I I didn't even know that wasn't the government. So Mm -mm. it's just a group of international. Nobody knows. Nobody, no, like you can go on their website. And it says, it alludes to the fact that they're not government, but it doesn't ever say who the actual owners of that institution are. So when you hear that Elon Musk is the richest person in the world or, you know, Bill Gates or the guy who owned Telcel or whatever, they're, they're like patsies, which, I mean, speaking of the word patsy, we're going to have to talk about the Kennedy assassination, but, um... (laughs) They're just they're they're faces of nothing. Hmm. The true wealth you don't know who those people are. Yeah, I mean it's the whole thing with with Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell. Like, those are the faces. That's not who's actually behind all of it. That's like just opening that door yeah, into the, the, whatever world that it, is. It's enough that the uppers that actually run everything are like, hey, just throw it out there. Because it's happening, so throw it out there. Put a face on it. Jeffrey Epstein's the face. Ghislaine's the face. It's all done. Yeah. No one, no one's gonna care after that. Okay, cool. Sounds good. The maybe the twin towers. <clears throat> hey, just make this happen, and then everyone's gonna stop worrying about the fact that we're missing two point two trillion dollars. Yeah. And maybe there's way more to it. Like maybe they were covering up a lot of stuff. It's like recently with uh, Balenciaga and the the weird stuff there with Kanye West and Kim and all of that. that. Yeah. Well, don't get into it. It's just a rabbit hole. It's just, it's like what, what's truly going on that they, they're just trying to hide. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That's what I think. So it's hidden secrets of money. That's what it's called. Yeah. It's on YouTube. It's really good, but it's interesting too. Like I was just looking on the federal reserve website. Like it's interesting that it just, I mean, it's pretty, out there in the open like it says the federal reserve system was created on december 23rd 1913 when president woodrow wilson signed into law the the federal reserve act which it's like oh president woodrow wilson like oh shoot like of course there's (laughs) corruption (laughs) around it you know like anyway but it's just it's interesting but yeah as you dig into that then it's like if that can happen, like if if we can have secret combinations that control our money supply, yeah, it doesn't get any bigger than that, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. and maybe these rabbit holes actually lead to nowhere. So, <clears throat> on the Titanic, there were three really really rich people who were against the Federal Reserve that ended up dying on the Titanic. Hmm. But I believe J.P. Morgan. And one of the Rothschilds were supposed to be on the Titanic. And the day before, they're like, ah, we're out. Sorry, we got some stuff to do over here hmm. in England or wherever it came from. Then you dig, like, into the Titanic. There were two ships that were exactly the same. Did I send you that? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Two sh- or maybe you sent it to me. Two ships that were exa- exactly the same. And the company who had built them, they needed an insurance claim because um, they were about to go out of business. So it's possible they actually, sh- it wasn't the Titanic that sank, it was its sister ship, but they switched places with it. Hmm. And hadn't they just recently taken out the insurance policy too? Yeah. Like, it was like, like within right months. as it was getting ready to take off, they're like, oh, we want to insure that Which, for X amount. Interestingly, the guy who owned the Twin Towers, yeah. off his insurance. Yeah. Then once he got his insurance paid out, he sued the insurance and got double. So the guy quadrupled the amount of money that was supposed to be paid out on if something happened in the Twin Towers. Mm-hmm. And he did it like, because it seemed like he upped the policy or something, mm-hmm. right? It was right Within before weeks. it happened. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 
It's wild. And, and I mean, I mean, some of this is probably a coincidence. Absolutely. But you see this stuff over and over and over and over again. I mean, I just, I honestly don't believe in coincidence that much anymore. Not just anymore. with the things that happen in my life. Yeah. You know, like there's very, you think, oh man, that was a coincidence that that happened and that happened together like that. That worked out better than I thought, or that happened the, exactly the way I was thinking that it should happen. Well, yeah, like you're, you know, we're creating things every day, whether we know it or not, with yeah. with, with the, the actions we're taking, the things we're doing and stuff like that. But if we are a species that evolved out of nothing on a spinning ball of an infinite universe with nothing out there, coincidence doesn't exist. It's all by chance. Yeah, that's true. So if that's the case, yeah, what I'm saying, right. oh yeah, <clears throat> what I'm saying, devil, is devil's eye. Take that away, like take that away from the people. Take that that belief away, and it's like, oh yeah, there's just a whole bunch of coincidences that happen all the time. Or we're all connected. There's a consciousness that exists. There's frequency. There's vibration. There's this this mm -hmm. you know universal laws that were set in place by something or someone. They don't. They don't want you to believe that. They want you to believe that there there is no higher power. We're just here by chance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we have no meaning. We have no meaning. Yeah. Yeah. That is pretty wild when you think about it because me and my wife were just thinking about where we were uh, two years ago. So we were, we were in the apartment complex that we were, um, like, managing. So we're in there, and we say, where do we want to be in five years? We said, okay, well, we want to have our house. We want to work from home. We want to split our time with the kids and work. And I want this truck. Yep. And then we I didn't even think about it for years. And then me and my wife looked at where we're at. We have our house. I bought the 2019 Ram Eco Diesel, exactly like what I wanted. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. And then we split our time half and half. And that's what we're doing right now. And but it's like, the world wants you to believe that you need to graduate high school, go to college, get a job your goals shouldn't be set you shouldn't i mean they're not saying not to set goals but they're not ever teaching that they're not teaching as a kid yeah you right. can have whatever you want you what? just gotta think yep. about it and project it and yep. then work towards it i tell my kids you can literally be anything you want to be except for president of the united states <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah. already set yeah. in the course there's nothing <laughs> yeah. you can do about right that. yeah everything else though and the person you would have to become to be on that short list is yep. not the kind of pre people that i want my kids no. to be no <laughs> <laughs> no, that's wild. That's cool. It is wild. And what uh, people need to understand is what you did five years ago, you're doing again, and they need to do it now mm -hmm. and be and, and write it down, focus on it, believe it, and let it go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It sounds so woo-woo to me, honestly. Like, it sounds very hippie, but then you look at what happened and exactly what happened. You just yeah. put it out in the universe and work towards it, and it happens. I think the big thing is focus. Like, you know, you just said focus there. I think that that's... I think a lot of people that are unhappy with where they're at, they're focusing on the wrong thing, but they don't realize that they are. You know, if you're in a job that you hate, that job takes so much focus and time. You're spending, you know, 80% of your waking hours focusing on this thing because you're forced to, you know, like yeah. you feel like maybe you feel like you don't have any other options or you feel like you have to to make you know, because you're living paycheck to paycheck and you got to have that or whatever. I really, you know, same kind of thing over and over in my life. As we've stepped out of our comfort zone, you know, we, we find out that, or, you know, we figure out that this really isn't the direction we want to be going. We want to be going that way. And, but it's hard to look at it and say, okay, well, how do we go that way? You know, well, you kind of have to step out there and start focusing on that direction, even though, you probably don't know what steps to take, but as you focus in that thing, you know, in the beginning, it feels like nothing's happening. You're not getting anything done. Well, then little by little, you get little wins and you get little, you know, you, you things start to move that direction before too long. It's, you know, it's this huge thing. And you're like, man, we didn't, you know, we did it. We're going the direction that we want to, but it's back to that thing where, society's told us oh you you need to be safe and secure and have a good job that's secure i mean jobs are not secure no. i don't care what you do the secure yeah. part would be figuring out hey 
I can control whatever, or I can create whatever I want. All I have to do is do these things. So if something happens in life that's unexpected or whatever, well, I know the steps that I can do to create that again. You know, yeah. I mean, that's security, but, yeah. but we're not taught that. No. And once you become successful in the public's eye, they go, what an overnight lucky success. Yeah. You're like, no, that was focused. Mm-hmm. That was dedication. That was tons of failure. Mm-hmm. Just an insane amount of failing, like quote failing, because you just take that as learning opportunities. Mm-hmm. It happens all the time. And you might not have even told anybody about it for yeah. two or three years because yep. you're just kind of, you, maybe you're embarrassed or you're not <clears throat> confident about it or whatever. So you're in your own bubble, you know, doing what yeah. you can. You haven't told anybody that for two or three years. And then you finally get to where you're building a little bit of momentum. And then maybe it's three or four or five years after that, you finally are making a big, you know, a big difference. And people are saying that. Yeah. Well, there was probably years of time that nobody knew what was going on inside your brain or the things that you were taking, you know, yeah. that you were writing down and the goals that you were focusing on and the small little things you were doing. Yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, just listen to a podcast of, uh, Hodger Gracie, so uh, arguably the best jiu-jitsu uh, competitor that's ever lived. You know, the Gracies, like they're the ones mm-hmm. who brought jiu-jitsu to the United States. <clears throat> and he just said in there, he's like, I just I just knew I'd win. Mm. Like I never went into a match thinking that I'd win. I just, I just knew it. And when he began his journey to becoming the greatest competitor, he said he only told a few people. He's like, I didn't go out and tell the world. I told the people that I trusted. Mm-hmm. And even they were like, oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Do your thing, buddy. But, which focus on expands, so. Yeah. Yeah, and I've, I think I found more and more over the years, I more along the lines of what he did, I kind of hold my cards pretty close to my chest. Yeah. Because there's, especially when you're starting something new or doing something that maybe other th- people think isn't smart or whatever, the last thing you need starting out is a bunch of negative, you know, yeah. commentary and people thinking you're dumb and that kind of stuff, you know. I and, guess depending on the individual. Yeah, maybe. You know, Trump might announce it yeah, because that's true. He, wants, he wants people to bet against him. Yeah, that's true. Um, that but, might that yeah. might create more momentum or whatever. Yeah. I know when we started the rock wall, um, there weren't people that... that came up to me face to face and were like hey this is a stupid idea <clears throat> later on though they're like we thought you were crazy yeah we never told and i'm glad that they didn't tell me that they thought i just did it you know but um i could see it both ways i could see announcing it to the world and then having to do it because you've announced it or keep your cards closed. like neither way is right or wrong yeah just individual yeah, yeah, I think it's true. about the people that you have around you. Because I know if I went out and told people, I mean, especially with the art studio that I started, people were like, that's a dumb idea. Mm-mm. I just had to do it anyways. But yeah. it sounds like you have a good group of people that you say, I'm going to do this crazy thing. And they're like, yeah, I go do it. Let's, yeah. Let's well, see it you know, you came and talked to us about it. And um, <laughs> you know us. We're like, sweet. Yeah. Start it. Yeah. Go. And you're like, oh, uh, what steps? I'm like, I don't know what steps. Yeah. Go. Just go do it. Go do it. And you did it and you made it successful. Yeah. Yep. I know when I quit my last job, I know that people were, I, I, you know. Oh, yeah. And not, well, and even to my face a little bit, people were like, oh, that's scary. Like, oh, why did you do that? Which I took it as that had very little to do with me yeah. and a lot more to do with them and, sure. and where they were at, you know, which is fine. And, you know, I actually kind of felt bad, like, oh that sucks that you don't like doing this, but you don't feel like you have the confidence to step out and do something else. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, at, you know, you just have to kind of let that stuff roll off your back and, and move forward. And, uh, it was the best decision I've ever made. So not saying that it was a bad place to be either. Nope. You and I, I mean, we've talked about this several times. Like we both, quit that same last job. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't regret any of my time there. Mm-hmm. It was a great place. Yeah. And everything that we do in life gets us to where we are right now. So mm-hmm. it's all good. And even those people 
that are like, which is funny because even the the very uppers that are mm-hmm. like, what are you doing? You're throwing all this away? It's like, no, I learned from all of this. Yeah, I'm not like, throwing anything away. So, and like you mm-hmm. said, you almost kind of feel bad for that person because they just don't understand yet that you can literally create and be anything you want. They've fallen into the system, yeah. that system that taught them from early on, high school, college, degree, Get a job, get a job, work in that pay for taxes. 50 years or yep. whatever. <clears throat> yeah, they're just in it. Mm-hmm. But, and back to our conspiracy part of this whole thing. Like, you can see how the mindset of, well, I can go create whatever I want. Like, I don't, okay, you don't want to come with me, that's fine. I don't need you. I can go create whatever I want over here, and I'll find the people that I want. That doesn't work well for a, somebody that's trying to have workers inside of a business. Yeah. You know, you can see how that would be problematic. Yeah. You know. It's interesting, too, though, because, like, we as employers are consistently encouraging our people to do what they want. Mm-hmm. So if someone's like, hey, I want to go start a rock climbing gym in... You know, I, I'm not going to encourage that they do it in Rexburg. <laughs> but if they did, I, I would think still... that, I think that you would, though. Yeah, that's the thing. Is <laughs> I, it wouldn't be like, oh, you jerk. Yeah. You see, no, you collaborate. Like, we are creative individuals, and we can make things as big, and you grow a community. So it's just interesting. It's, just, it's a mindset. And that's why people need to research Flat Earth. <laughs> because <Yeah. laughs> although it might not be true you're just challenge your beliefs mm-hmm. it's okay to challenge your beliefs yeah and challenge them every single day that's yeah. a good that's a good point you know especially you think how's flat earth and a job that i don't like connected that's it right there yeah look at different viewpoints Study, get a book about somebody that's an entrepreneur and learn what they do and how their mind works. And, yeah. you know, like, I think that that's it. Like, is it, uh, I think it was Thomas Jefferson said, question with boldness, even the very existence of God. Yes. For if there be a God, he surely would prefer, you know, like honest questioning yeah. instead of blind following or something like that i just slaughtered that but that, that's that then, <laughs> but that's that's kind of the gist of it you yeah. know something like that absolutely so question everything well and what's funny too and this just barely came to me your boss believed in you so the guy who hired you believed in you but you don't believe in yourself enough to hire yourself yeah but hmm. your boss believed in you you obviously either bs or sold your way to the spot that you are in your job yeah. Why aren't you selling yourself to yourself? Because yeah. we're taught not to. We're taught to blindly follow. We're taught to listen to authority and not question them. Yeah. Speaking of starting a, a new business, I think we need another gym in town. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> we need something to compete with uh, Fit One and Botify. Apparently, they're just always slammed. Well, like, man. Their, their parking lots are always full, but it does make me wonder... Um, if the people in those gyms are fulfilled. But, I mean, there's got to be some people that are sick of the crowds and want yeah. some more, <clears throat> I would think. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just throwing that out there. If you guys want to start another one, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I would like, um, I'd like to see a, a strength gym. Yeah. A strength and conditioning type gym that is very non-machine based. Mm-hmm. That is that what that guy was doing? It wasn't there one in Rigby that was kind of focused on specific yeah. strength conditioning and that yeah. kind of stuff. And then, yeah, that kind or of they, fizzled out and it was bought by Fit One, and now it's a commercial gym. Mm. Oh, really? Which I mean, on oh. like I don't know who owns Fit One or Botify or whatever. Like, I mean, good for them. Like, it's cool what they're doing. Mm-hmm. I just think that that style only works for very specific people. I actually had someone in today <clears throat> that we ended up doing some personal training and um, he was like, dude, I went to all the gyms just trying to find what worked for me and I ended up just doing bicep curls and running at every gym that I went to. Bicep curls and run on the treadmill. Bicep curls and run on the treadmill. 
he's like, here, I started six months ago. I'm down 35 pounds. I went hiking more than I've hiked hunting this, you know, ever in my life. And I can keep up with everybody. And it's like, I believe in this style. So even though their parking lots are full, maybe their pocketbooks are full. It's not the fulfillment Mm -hmm. that, that is possible. And that's really like even full circling this conspiracy wise, we're not taught to be fulfilled. We're taught to fulfill a role, fulfill this role in society, but you don't need to feel fulfilled. You need to work 40 hours a week. You need to pay taxes. You need to contribute so much to a 401k that we're going to control whether it goes up or down. And maybe when you're 65, you can retire unless we throw a pandemic into the wrench and have inflation go out the roof. So now 50% of retired people are looking for jobs. Yeah, that's wild. It's, it's nuts because it's a, a controlled system that's literally controlled by people that we elect, supposedly, elect... <laughs> See, because we should question everything that we elect thinking that they're smarter than we are. Like, why would we elect somebody? Because we think that they're going to do the right thing, mm-hmm. but they're fallible humans that think they know more than us. Yep. Um, getting back on conspiracies. <laughs> that is the conspiracy. No, sure. no, that is a conspiracy, but... I know you guys are randomly going to know everything about this, and that's why I wanted to bring it up, because you guys know all these conspiracies. But Nikola Tesla, I was watching a video on him and how he uh, had all these great ideas, and he's going to make electricity free for everyone. And when he died, he had boxes filled with you know, all, all of his inventions and everything. Apparently the CIA came in and took those boxes, and there's something like 20 boxes missing. Have you heard about that? Yeah, so I, I believe it was the FBI, or at least pre-FBI, because that was, I, I don't know. Or maybe exactly, it was the FBI. I don't know exactly when the FBI started, but it was like the the organization that existed right before the FBI. And then, what what was it, J, was it J. Edgar Hoover? This yeah, was I think it was. Mm-hmm. So it was right before all of that. Anyways, they, they go in, they take all of his stuff, <clears throat> they comb through it, and years later... Nikola Tesla's family, I, I believe they actually sued to get that information back. They wanted hmm. all of his stuff back. And I'm off on numbers, but say it was 20 boxes that the FBI had. Mm-hmm. It was like nine boxes that went to the family. Yeah. So, yeah, stuff is stuff is taken and suppressed all the time. Why, why would a government who wants tax money... So essentially a business that has no incentive to actually produce on its promises Mm -hmm. or extremely large energy corporations ever let something like free energy come out, even though it's been proven over and over and over again that we can pull some type of energy out of the ether, Mm -hmm. out of the universe and power lights, power cars. But if you can't monetize it. Why would you ever let that person? Yeah. Why would you? And I think they had enough respect for him that they just let him live. Nowadays, they just off you. Like someone produces a hydrogen car, you're just dead. Yeah. Because you've killed yourself. So <clears throat> we actually had, I might have told you, yeah, I think we've talked about this before, but growing up, there was a guy that uh, lived not too far from here, um, kind of in one of our you know towns around around rexburg but he developed this thing and it it was just something that went in your gas line and it would meter somehow it was more efficient at metering gas um going into your into your engine and had this whole thing documented with a you know video camera and everything and he started and drove like this whole huge loop around um like i don't know it was hundreds of miles or something like that got back home documented the whole thing videoed it had used like one gallon of gas because it made you know it just whatever this was doing yeah yeah it just was somehow would would make it use fuel more efficiently you know and uh so like lots of people in the community knew about it 
And, uh, and I've even got friends that, uh, that it was their uncle. One of the, um, one of the, um, people that worked at the fire station, it was actually her husband's uncle or something like that anyway. And, uh, so he was, you know, getting patents on this and everything. This was like in the seventies or eighties or something and just quit doing it. Just, you know, Mm. it's like, huh, everybody's like, what's going on? Why aren't you pursuing that anymore? And he's like, no, I just lost interest in it. Not going to do it anymore. Well, he had gotten threatened. Like somebody had called and threatened him and his family that if they didn't, if he didn't scrap that project, then there was going to be problems. So, I mean, just think about the amounts of technology that are suppressed. We have another friend that was, that was a firefighter that <laughs> yeah. was... Uh, it's crazy that it's so close. Like, we know him. Yeah. Like, this, is, this isn't like... Here's a, and he actually... So this friend that was the firefighter actually knew this other guy that I'm talking about. They, they grew up in close towns. And so I asked him about it. Yeah. And he's like, oh, yeah. He's like, I remember when that happened. And I remember seeing his stuff and it worked. And uh, people in the community had it on their cars and it worked great and everything. And um, but so this guy, same kind of thing. He's into power generating stuff. Yeah. With mostly with uh, magnets. Mm -hmm. But he created a a free energy machine. All it would take Mm -hmm. was a little bit of power to get moving. And once the motor was going, it kept going. Hmm. Yeah. That's so, free that's free energy. You create one of those machines and send it to market it and patent it and send it to every single household out. Don't patent it. Mm-hmm. Don't patent it. It's free energy. How how about you just help well, the world? And th- that was the approach he wanted to yeah. take was, you know, like, hey, if I can if I can build a business around doing this research that I really love and enjoy doing, and I can I, I, you know, I don't have to monetize it. I just want this out yep. there. And he, same kind of thing, had some stuff happen where he kind of got shut down in a way. I think he's still pursuing it um, and doing some of that stuff. But like he kind of had said that there were some spooky things that had happened around that. Yeah. Hmm. And that's just close to home. Yeah. So now one person out of the 7 billion, supposedly, 7 billion people that live on the planet, um, we know them. How many other things are happening right now mm-hmm. that are suppressed? Yeah. I, I think a lot of things are suppressed and we're just, we never learn about them. Yeah. You'll, you'll see these obscure videos all over the place and it's like, oh, that video is probably fake. Well, once you're into like 500 <laughs> fake videos, it's like, I don't know guys out of these 500 fake videos, maybe 1% of them is real, which means there's five free energy machines that are sitting out there. Yeah. Well, and how many, so back to like the, the like woo woo stuff, you know, like frequency and that kind of stuff. Like, wasn't it that they were doing a, st- well, the TV, yeah. like when the TV was invented, there was different, like five different people yeah. around the world yeah. that, inv- that had invented the TV, but it was like back in what, like the 20s? I don't know. Not exactly I guess sure. I'm not yeah. sure, but, but we should know. They didn't have, the communication capabilities yeah. we have now, like it yeah, was barely even, each other. yeah. And yet there was five people around the earth or however many that had created the television. Yeah. And so like you think about light and knowledge when somebody comes up with something new, it's probably not just that one individual that came up with that idea. There's probably others as well. And I've even seen that in my own life. Like we've had me and my wife have talked about business ideas or whatever. And, and uh like hey that would be a really good idea and we're like nah let's you know we don't have time or we don't want to do it or whatever guaranteed with within a year absolutely somebody else is doing it yeah. you know and yeah. so like now our if if we have an idea that we really like it's like oh we better get going on it right now yeah. cuz otherwise somebody else is going to if we don't pick up on that that's you know we almost look at it as you know inspiration and knowledge that is coming to us if we don't pick up on it somebody else will you know i i totally agree yeah what was your business you had i saw something that you were gonna do that you didn't do and someone else picked up oh well i mean probably several honestly (laughs) like we have Mm -hmm. ideas all the time that Mm -hmm. that we decide not to do 
Uh, but I remember my dad, and he even pursued it. He's like, we need to have a, um, a, a pizza and salad buffet in Rexburg. <laughs> and then, like, we were uh-huh. looking at buildings. We were, we were, I was pretty young. He was running numbers, distributors, like the whole works, and then just never pulled the trigger on it. What happens a year later? Craigos. Yeah. You know, and good for Craigos. Like, yeah. good job for pulling mm-hmm. the trigger. Like, mm-hmm. I love it. But somebody is out there pulling off of your thought frequencies, and they will do it if you don't. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. Like, it's okay not to as well. We had, we, there was a piece of property that came up for sale. This has been a few years ago, but we'd like drive by it all the time and we're like, oh, we ought to buy that. You know, like it was a house and then back behind it, there was like, I don't know, four or five acres or something like that. And, and me and my wife were always like, oh, we could buy that, build a driveway right here back to those other ones, split that off, you know, and then you could build two houses back there or whatever. Never did it. Never did it. It got it got done the exact layout <laughs> that we said would be a good way to do it. You guys are so, so nice. You're so it's, nice. It's funny. You helped them. <laughs> I gave them the thoughts. idea. Have you heard the story of John? Well, no, and it's probably not even that. It's probably that a good idea is like kind of probably universally known as something that needs to be done. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a need universally that needs to be filled. And so, you know. Have you heard of the theory that ideas are actually their own entities that exist Hmm. that exist through frequency and then it they place themselves in the minds of those who are ready Hmm. which is kind of interesting there's a a book um, this is more of like a early Latter Day Saint book by Parley P. Pratt where he actually talks about ideas as molecular Hmm. um I think it was in the, I think it was the book, the key to the science of theology, but it might, it might've been a different book, but it's so interesting because this is like, you know, 1840s, 1850s. And he's talking about how, when we think a thought, we're actually creating it in our mind molecularly. And that if it's in there, once we've created it molecularly, then it can be transferred from the mind to the outside world. You're like, in the 1850s, hmm. we're talking about that? Yeah, that is interesting. Like, so ahead of its time. Yeah. I, I don't know. I feel like we always look back on 1800s and, you know, always look back, even all the way back to, like, Egyptian people. Like, how did they do that? How did they know how to do that? I think we just have a big head. Yeah. Like, I think we I totally think agree. that we are smarter. But think about people in the 1800s. All they did for entertainment was probably read or drink. Yeah. And that's it. <laughs> yeah. Or in the 1800s, they were moving into the ancient Tartaria sites. <laughs> or that. <laughs> no, but I just think, like, we always look back and like, well, they didn't have the technology. There's no way they could have figured it out. But, you know, I think they they were probably would blow us out of the water nowadays. Yeah. Just because how much time they spent talking and reading and studying and doing all that stuff. That's all they had. So, yeah. Well, and technology might even be our crutch. Yeah. You know, like, you think about thought and frequency and the power of all of those things that's all that maybe i mean they could have had advanced technology too in some of those places but uh that's all they had but that might be the superior form of technology rather than relying on a cell phone or a computer or something like that you know i don't know no i i agree that's so much has changed in the last hundred years I was uh, doing a podcast with my dad and my brother because I kind of want to, like, immortalize some stories. Just, Mm -hmm. you know, my dad tells stories, but then I have to try to reproduce that story, and it's all going to change over time. His dad was born in 1905 and lived into the 70s. So when he was born, it was horse and buggy. Then it was cars. Then it was airplanes. Then it was spaceships. Yeah. Then it was someone on the moon supposedly. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> Did we land on the moon? No. Nope, I've done the research. <laughs> it doesn't check out. Alex Jones believes that we, we landed on the moon, but we lost the footage. So we had to fake the footage. Uh, it is an interesting thing. Like, you go on YouTube, and I don't know. Like, m- my honest yeah. answer is I have no idea. Yeah. But, uh, like, you go and watch the footage... And it seems very silly. Like, yeah. you know, like, okay, who's who's standing here 
videotaping him coming <laughs> out of the spacecraft, yeah. right? And oh, then oh, they, they, they <laughs> sent a camera down remotely. They had remote control cars back yeah, then. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> and then the uh, and then how does that get you know the technology to send that back to Earth real time? Yeah. And yet, like ten years ago, we couldn't get decent cell phone reception. We still can't <laughs> like, get decent cell phone. Yeah. And the president <laughs> talked to the astronauts on the moon via landline. <laughs> what? And then when they're leaving, the camera like. So they left a camera there, right? And they go launching off into space, and they had such good cameras that it panned up to follow it. Like, I just don't know. It, it, watching it, you're like... But man, that was strong tinfoil. <laughs> like, that lunar lander, it was such strong tinfoil. And, you know, they got back to the, the space capsule with flappy doors, Um and they were able to get through the Van Allen radiation belt. They can't even explain how they got through the Van Allen radiation belt. Mm. Like, you know, it's just so amazing, all that happened. Then they get back to the Earth, and they start asking them questions, like the Van Allen radi radiation belt. And the, the astronauts are like, oh, what, what's that? <laughs> oh, you don't know what that is? That's the radiation belt that kills you if you go through it. <laughs> well, and wasn't isn't even their comment now, like, when they've been asked, like the actual people, like the NASA people, yeah. have been asked, why haven't we gone back? They said they lost the technology. Yeah, the technology was lost. That's like they literally my said dog that. ate my homework yeah. kind of answer. Yeah. <laughs> well, and some really interesting things. It, you see the, the, was it Kennedy? No, it was Houston. Because Houston, we have a problem. So the, the Houston Space Center, and it's all of these like, computer looking things you know they got these little switches and these little <laughs> radar screens like they actually were doing something well when that whole program got scrapped the government doesn't well maybe maybe some of the government does but the government doesn't usually just destroy everything they put it up for auction so this stuff goes to auction and it gets sold to a movie studio place because you know perfect props <laughs> and the guy goes through it and he's like there's nothing in these machines. So either the really? government, yeah, the government was like, "Hey, let's pull everything out of these machines because we don't want people to know what we had, so the Soviets can't reproduce how to go to the moon." Or there was literally nothing, nothing in those, in and it. it was a movie set, huh. like Walt Disney and Operation Fishbowl. Walt Disney filmed some operations for the CIA. Why would Walt Disney? Mm -hmm. Film operations, mm -hmm. and then who was the guy? It was a uh, two thousand, like two thousand one, a space odyssey or something like that. I don't know. There's a movie called A Space Odyssey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, super. Yeah, uh, I don't remember the guy's name. He's the one who who helped NASA film everything. Hmm. So this is all movie producer crap. It's movie producers that are producing movies. Mm-hmm. Or we landed on the moon. I don't know. One of the two. <laughs> but there's stuff on the moon, right? Like you can look now and there's stuff I on the moon. I do there? not believe that you can actually take a telescope and see the flag that we landed on the moon. I don't think you can. Like I, I've presented this before and people are like, oh, I saw on a website this and that. But then you can go debunk that website. I do not think you can actually look really in through a telescope and see the flag or the footsteps. I heard that they left some kind of mirror or something and they can shoot a laser at it and it shoots back. That's and they're like, crap. No, look, we have this. <laughs> and so I don't know. I hope so. And prove it to me. Couldn't a satellite per, like propel that into the moon or something too maybe but yeah I don't maybe know. they sent it unmanned and they yeah. left that and they're like look we're, we went there yeah our stuff. i don't know i, don't I, know. I mean really it was the if if we won the space race we w we would have faked the space the moon landing like if if winning the cold war is getting to the moon and we know that people are corrupt and governments can be corrupt then you can't change my mind that we wouldn't fake something to win that war I'm not saying we yeah. did yeah but why wouldn't you mm -hmm. if getting to the moon is what wins the war mm -hmm. show someone a movie and, that and you land takes, on the moon yeah exactly yeah. and it takes relatively small amounts of resources and money to do that yeah versus fighting world war three yeah like and then you do it and you're like well crap now we kind of have to go along with it you know what i mean yeah. like 
I don't know. So and how many years till they say, okay, we, we faked it. It would look good, right? Like, <laughs> I, they probably have, and no one gives a crap. It's I like mean, they did the say Pentagon, the aliens. Yeah, came. the Pentagon comes out, and they're like, uh, so um, aliens exist. Uh, here's all of the, the the Pentagon alien papers, and everyone's like, oh, cool, whatever. Aliens yeah. exist. It's like, no, the, the government just told us that they've been lying to us for years. So have you ever, speaking of aliens, this is pretty. This guy's pretty interesting. Just I'll really fast. Up. Well, you're looking it up. Warner Von Braun was a Nazi. Yeah. He was brought over in Operation Paperclip, and he became friends with Walt Disney. Yeah. He creates NASA... And he was a Nazi that came over with 3,000 other Nazis, starts NASA, and then on his tombstone is Psalms something something that talks about the earth and the firmament. The firmament is that thing that blocks us off from what exists on the other side. I believe that Werner Von Braun believed in Flat Earth. Hmm. That's my statement of the day. <laughs> <laughs> and he was a Nazi that yeah. we that our government brought over. Well, back to conspiracy. So, okay, if the Federal Reserve's true, what else could be true? Oof. If our Every government day. brought Nazi, was that was that paperclip? Paperclip. Yeah. yeah. So Operation Paperclip. You know, people like, oh no, the Nazis. We would never bring Nazis never. over. Yeah, that's fact. That's not conspiracy. No. That actually happened. So it's like, okay, if those two things are real, why couldn't World Trade Center be real? Why couldn't yeah. aliens be real? Why couldn't, you know, all yeah. this stuff? Yeah. Um, Operation Northwoods. That was, uh, Kennedy was put in, and the CIA goes to Kennedy, and they go, hey, so there's this operation. It's called Operation Northwood. We're going to fake that Cuba attacks us. But we can't fake an attack, so we're actually going to attack us. We're going to kill America And kill our own people. We're going to say it's Cuba. And Kennedy's like, whoa, whoa, that's not okay. We don't do that. By the way, now I hate the CIA. I'm going to crush them into a thousand pieces. Secret societies are bad. Secret societies have always been bad. The CIA is a secret society. Boom. Dead. Yeah? Yeah. So what I'm getting from this is aliens exist. <laughs> they own the Federal Reserve. Oh, I never they, thought I don't know. That. I don't know. But there this guy, go. so that Gaia app or whatever yeah, yeah. that I sent you. Did I send you the the alien one? No, I've been watching the one. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Disclosure with yeah, Stephen disclosure. Greer. Yeah, I only watched the first episode. It's pretty interesting. Like, he... And, like, looking at him, it's not like he's a guy that y you think is trying to, like, lie to you or is crazy or anything. He's, like, very upfront about... He, he goes around and does, uh, like... Like, uh, like they pull them in, right? Like they, they kind of like pull the aliens in. Yeah. And he'll go around and do like, like a meeting or whatever with people. Like, what am I trying to, like you go to like, not a convention, yeah, but like a say, like, seance either. Cause that makes yeah, it sound even that. worse. I would like, be like a, there's a group of people like that a business, gets together. like a, like a convention. A convention. Yes, yeah, something like that. Yeah. I don't know. That's not the, that's not exactly the word I'm looking for. But uh, retreat. He, he goes around. Yeah, he goes around and does these clinics or whatever, and people come in and they do meditations and stuff, and they pull in aliens from from uh, out in the universe. Aliens come yeah. from. Yeah, and but then from he goes Africa. into but then he goes into like if you get like three or four episodes in he gets into like the problems that he's had with the government because of it yeah and basically like high up people being like hey like we know this stuff but we don't want anybody else to know this stuff and like we have all of these spacecraft and we have all of these things and anyway it's pretty interesting yeah well and it's crazy because even me believing so many conspiracy facts because we know that a lot of them are real mm-hmm when we talk about this, I'm like, we're talking about summoning aliens? <laughs> like, what? What are we talking about? Well, his his stance is that they are all peaceful. Yeah. And they're watching, which is interesting because Joe Rogan's kind of talked about this too. And, like, they have a specific interest in Earth because if we, because our technology is getting to a point to where we can use nuclear weapons. And he... Um, 
they have specifically told him that when a nuke goes off on Earth, it creates huge, like, percussion-type waves out through space that causes damage on in their worlds and their and that kind of stuff which he said that they like some come from worlds in our universe and some come from like other dimensions even or the other side of the ice wall <laughs> sure <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but anyway so that's why so he said like the his his uh stance is that they're all peaceful and they just come to try to or they're just watching us to make sure that we don't do something stupid basically if they if they are that advanced they have to be peaceful because if they're not peaceful yeah they would have destroyed we're already, themselves we're already dead yeah but part of me too is like i've seen star trek i know that there's i know that there's bad guys too yeah, you, there's, there's you would think so yeah. but maybe yeah. not which it would be cool if they're all peaceful well, but so, maybe off subject, but, but not. Where I'll, I'll try to go to the right place here. When I was growing up, it was like... Were I, you abducted by I was I was abducted. <laughs> this is my story. No. Um, <clears throat> because of how I was taught, I, I connected all drugs on the same plane. Mm -hmm. So marijuana was the same as cocaine, was the same as heroin, was the same as LSD, was the same as mushrooms, was the same as... I, I, I don't believe that anymore. Mm -hmm. like, I believe that heroin and cocaine are not good. Um, I, I don't know on marijuana. Like, I don't think that we should be regulating it from people. I think people can make their own decisions, that sort of thing. I believe in the research that I've done and people that I've talked to, uh, mushrooms are a way to a consciousness that we don't understand. And when someone is trying to become more conscious and connected whether that's to earth, higher power, divinity, themselves, whatever that is, they become more peaceful. So maybe as these beings or aliens or whatever we want to call them, they're, and, and we've even heard like, like Bob Lazar, who might be a nut job or maybe not, but mm -hmm. he predicted stuff that exists way before it was supposed to exist, like element 115. He said, that these crafts and the people that are running them, they're one with the craft. They're, yeah. they're running the craft off of their, their thought projections. That's what this guy says, yeah. too. So if we have a race that is that advanced, maybe you just become peaceful. Like, maybe their consciousness level is so high that they, 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 they know that killing is just stupid. Yeah. Well, and he said too, like even a lot of the, a lot of them can, like telepathically communicate and that kind of stuff, and even across huge distances, right? Because yeah. I mean, you think about like with our understanding, like Newtonian physics or whatever, like you think about traveling through the universe. Well, it's like eight billion light years. You know, like yeah. it's impossible to even at the speed of light. Move. And so he talks about it in, a, in the consciousness portion of it, that you can, you know, you can project your thoughts billions of light years away to these other beings or whatever. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and that's how they communicate. That's how they get around is going in and out of dimensions and stuff, which is crazy to think. Like, to think about that, you're like, man, that's, that's nuts. But how... But even back to like our simple, our simple explanation about thought, like, okay, if I, if I get a good idea and I don't do that idea, somebody else is going to do it, you know, a business idea or whatever. Yeah. Where'd that thought go? Well, yeah. Where did it go? And where did it come from? Yeah. Who's to say to it brain. didn't come from billions of light years? Like mm. consciousness yeah. could be everywhere. Yeah. And, you know, we even talk about that, like how God is everywhere essentially yeah like who's to say that that's not the same influence or power or whatever that the same consciousness or whatever you know i don't know yeah. i don't know so we might say it's kooky and that it's crazy but it's not crazy enough for the cia to study they've pulled people in 
uh, the whole Stranger Things series is is based on a CIA experiment that was done where they brought kids in hmm. and they they taught these kids to to mind project into other places. Mm-hmm. So they're like mm-hmm. I've read the documents. That's mm-hmm. what's so crazy. Is mm-hmm. this is all this is all like yeah, in the they vault, call it the ES, ESP. I'm not sure, but they there was so. I can't they remember if it was him. Kids to go oh. spy telepathically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And there's papers written on it mm-hmm. and declassified. And even adults, too. Like there was one, I'm trying to remember where I watched it. It might have been another documentary on that app. Um, but they, this, yeah, it was an actual, I can't remember what the CIA program was called, but they could, they were spying on people in Russia. And Russia was doing the same thing back to us during the Cold War. And they, like one example was this guy could see inside of a missile silo or something like something like that, like it was a secured thing in a mountain or whatever, go to a room, open up a file cabinet and read information in the file cabinet. And then, and like they would tell him, like they knew for a fact that he did not have prior, you know, knowledge of it or yeah. anything, and he would get it right. Or they would. There was another one where they brought some people in, and this guy gave him the coordinates of a cabin that he had just built, a little off-grid cabin. And um, so the people are like, "Oh, there was like two or three different people," and they described like this huge compound, and like these you know like specific kinds of vehicles and like there was you know even like some of these implements and stuff that they were using and whatever and so the guys doing the the test are like man you're way off like holy crap obviously this doesn't work well the guy was driving to his cabin or something and notices this little like roadway that he's never noticed before kind of close to where he was at so he goes driving down there it was a secure nsa location and it was exactly what those people had described and that like i think was the nsa anyway the nsa got wind of it yeah and freaked out and like came in and were trying to shut down their program or learning what was going on because nobody knew about that that secure location hmm. How does that work? Yeah, I want I want to learn how to do that. (laughs) Well, that I mean, in the the CIA mushrooms, humans, (laughs) right? Well, there's something there. I mean, you know, obviously Joe Rogan talks about it, but I got interested in it after Joe Rogan, so I started asking people that I knew that I was pretty sure had done mushrooms, Mm -hmm. and you know, we talk veils, yeah, and they do too. Hmm. It's just they're like honestly, there's like this veil that's kind of lifted and we see entities and you see the same entities that your buddy is seeing that's Mm -hmm. next to you now i think that a a lot of these let's call them plant medicines have more to do with intention you know so you'll talk to people that have done mushrooms like in high school at a party Mm -hmm. it's going to be very different than someone who goes to costa rica to do ayahuasca with an intention and so yeah. very, very different. But it, all of this has been studied by the government and declassified. Um, <clears throat> the LSD and mind control, totally, 100% CIA. MK Ultra, where they mind control people like Zoolander. <laughs> I mean, pretty much like that style of it, it happens. Mm-hmm. Um, it's happening right now you know they'll say that they scrap a program they're like oh mk ultra we got rid of that because that's so no you didn't you changed the name and you made it more secret that's just what they do so that so that uh it's called third eye spies okay it's on that app okay and it talks about uh yeah talks about that i was watching a video and and this lady might be a kook like that's the whole thing with all this is i don't know like, mm-hmm. I don't know, but I want to know. So I'm going to go out and just keep looking until th- they kill me or whatever. Um, there's this lady that's like, yeah, I was, uh, I was remote viewing this secret base in Antarctica. And I was caught by another guy who was remote viewing hmm. this place in Antarctica. 
And she said, so she starts to like run from this guy in her mind, or I don't know how this all works, but it essentially like she's remote viewing a place at the same time that someone else was remote viewing the same place. I'm like, I don't get, I don't get any of this. Like, I don't even know if someone's smart enough to think this crap up in their mind. Like it might be true yeah, just yeah. because of that. Yeah. Just because <laughs> it's out there. Yeah. In that, uh, <clears throat> that Stephen Greer one. I think it's like episode five or something. Like after a while, he talks about uh, like black programs, like or something like that, That's or like super racist, like but... black, <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> like black. I, I can't remember like black box programs or yeah. something. Anyway, programs within the government that are still getting funded by government funds. Yeah, but like there's only certain people that will be able to know about it. Yeah. And even like the president, like he knew of specific examples where the president was like, Hey, I need to know about this. And they're like, Nope, sorry, you don't yeah. like there's, there's people that know about it and there's people that don't. And he was talking about a, like a military guy that he was having to do something like he was having to testify for this guy or something and that guy had had access to one of these, you know, these shadow programs or whatever. And um, he had to do something, you know, something with it. And that guy had access to like, I think he said like 116 of these programs. So he got, he like found out about all these programs through having to work yep. on this thing with this one guy. So he's like, there's so many programs out there that, sure. and the money is um, just like dark money. Like yeah. it gets, it, yeah. it comes from like, there's ways that they will launder money and it gets, yeah, you the, know, funneled the, in or the military will have a budget item that's, they don't, you know, so you hear about, oh, well, they don't know where $2 trillion went. It very easily could have gone to these yeah. these kind of programs, you know. When when a toilet costs fifteen thousand dollars, you're like, okay, where'd the other uh, fourteen thousand eight hundred dollars go? <laughs> right. And, and that stuff happens all the time. It even happens in local governments. Mm -hmm. that it, where it's like, why did that cost so much money? Where did that money go? It doesn't matter. Well, look at how much cash there was, like in Iraq, for instance, yeah. that all of a sudden just disappeared, whatever, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. or think about the amount of money they're funneling to Ukraine. Yeah. Where's I that mean, money going? And so he said that like a lot of these programs are international programs too, you know, and so there's cells or whatever in other countries that might be working together. So, I mean, if they're funneling money back and forth, then it's just their way of doing that. Yeah. And there's no oversight. No. So they can do whatever they want, you know, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. So I think crazy. that's the hardest thing is when you look at, you think of the United States, we're the good guys, right? And we don't do those things that Russia does, and we don't do those things that China does. And then you slowly start finding mm -hmm. out that, yeah, we we do those things, and we're probably, we're probably better at it. <laughs> yeah. Or the worst. Yeah. 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 Like, well, that book that you, you turned me on to, um, oh, yeah. Confessions of an Econo Economic Hitman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, so tell tell that to John. So it's been a while since I've read that. But so this guy essentially was like got approached in college and would say, or you know, for got approached by this company and was like, hey, do you want to? Well, you're telling this. I'm just going to go turn that off so that I don't know okay. what you're messing with. And so he's like, you know, got approached to be like an international businessman or something like mm -hmm. that. Anyway was working for a corporation that was in Boston. And so then, so he accepts this job and goes in. Well, what they were doing is they would go in to like a third world country and they would say, Hey, you've got all of these great natural resources. If you hire us, we will build you a dam that produces electricity and then raises the standard of living of your family, right? Or whatever. So they would go in. And uh, so he was kind of like the negotiator for this. And what they would do is once they would negotiate that and the countries would agree to it, then they would say, okay, well, you guys go to the World Bank and take out this multi-billion dollar loan to pay for this infrastructure. And then we'll help you build it we'll hire a bunch of people in your country you'll have a bunch of jobs like it'll be really good you know so this country so um but what they would do 
I guess when they were doing that negotiation, they would skew the numbers big time. Hmm. So they would say that they needed a whole bunch more money than they actually did and that they would get more of a benefit than they would. And so these countries would go take, you know, get the loan and then these guys would actually hire American companies to come in and do all the work. Mm -hmm. So they weren't making any jobs for those third world countries. They were in debt way past what the benefit was that they were getting, you know, so they'd say, oh, you're going to get this much electricity out of this. Well, it would end up being like a tenth of the amount of electricity or whatever. So there was no way that they could pay the loans off. And so then they would say, okay, now we own you. And it's American companies now, you know, have their hooks in these third world countries. And then they're exporting all the oil that they're getting. They're exporting all the energy. So it was a way to go in and basically swindle these countries Mm. and make them be in tons of debt. And there was nothing that, you know, they just had to go along with whatever they were told to do because they were in so much debt. Well, this guy kind of figured that out after a while that, you know, what he was doing was bad and started being like looking into it and stuff. Well, and he was also getting, you know, moving up in the company and that kind of stuff. Well, he found out that his company was actually getting funded directly by the Department of Treasury. (laughs) So it was it was just a front for the yeah. American government to go in and basically imperialism, go in and control these countries and take their stuff, but also have control over them. And what, and it what was, time was that? Like in the 70s. In the or, 70s. They just, or the or, 80s or now. Or now. <laughs> but then he said, too, like if, you know, there were some leaders that would would never agree to it. They knew what was going on, and so they would never agree to it. And so then they would send in, I think he called it like the jackals or something, but basically.